GTFO is a four-player co-op survival game, similar to Left 4 Dead or Vermintide, that takes place in a series of levels with varying difficulty, according to the order of the number that are assigned to each level. From A to the bottom, players are expected to perform various tasks in order to complete the mission. These tasks range from reaching areas of the complex to hacking terminals in order to gather information. The collection of levels are known as rundowns, which cycle every couple of months. Each rundown has a completely different set of missions, no two missions alike. As you work your way down the rundown, the challenges that the player is presented with become more complex and require a cohesive squad working effectively to achieve each task. The lore of this game is set in the sci-fi horror genre, the fever dreams of H.R. Geiger. As you first enter this world, you know little about it, other than the foreboding corridor that the drop pod enters you into. You are a set of four convicts, otherwise encased in a cryostasis pod in between missions. When you wake from cryosleep, you do so on a four-man container which rapidly lowers you into the blasted charred remains of the mysterious facility, deep underground. This place was owned by the secretive organisation Santonium Strategic Investment Company. At some point in the past, the remnants of an asteroid were discovered deep underground and Santonium set up a research facility in its vicinity. This extraterrestrial lump of rock contained some kind of life form of unknown makeup that was of interest to the scientists of Santonium. They dug deep into the Earth's crust in order to obtain samples and were successful in this task. At some point during the facility's operational lifespan, something happened that led to a containment breach with these samples, the result being the rapid spread of a mutagenic element that twisted and deformed human flesh into unrecognisable shells of teeth and tendril. The facility was abandoned, and as is seen at the entrance point to this facility, it seems that Santonium were successful at destroying the doorway to the complex, hence why you are lowered into this facility via some kind of controlled descent vehicle. It is unknown if any of the Santonium research team made it out of this place, but one thing is certain, those colleagues who were not able to leave this place still remain. Very little is known of this entity other than it directs the prisoners during their mission. The motives of the warden are currently not clear, only segmented facts retrieved via terminal hacking or through speculation onto each mission that the warden sends you on. The warden communicates with the prisoners via a built-in cortex neural interface, which allows the warden to direct the missions, wake the prisoners from their cryostasis when needed, and project images onto the prisoners' eyesight, usually in the form of text strings. This interface also allows the warden to help the prisoners by displaying to them their vital statistics, equipment status, and an interactive map of the complex. The warden symbol is encountered in the complex, usually on doors, which adds to the speculation that this warden entity is deeply associated with the facility itself, maybe even embedded into the facility as some kind of artificial intelligence. Although the warden has control of many of the facility's computer systems and uses this information to assist the prisoners, some aspects of this place are beyond the warden's reach and require human interaction on site in order to subvert, hence the need for the prisoners. Like almost all other aspects of the facility, not much is known about the transformative mutagen that exists at this place. It is not clear if the vessels that it currently inhabits have some form of collective communicational skills on the higher levels itself suggesting sapience. What is also not clear is the makeup of this life form or whether it is even biological. This mutagen can subvert the human body and change its makeup to horrifying lengths, resulting in what we currently know as the sleepers. The sleepers 
are the possible remnants of the facility's personnel mutated into horrifying husks of flesh and boils with an abundance of teeth and aggression. They come in various shapes and sizes, usually starting at the size of a human to sizes in the range of 10 to 12 feet tall. Sleepers, whilst left dormant, will curl up their extremities, existing in a sleep-like state, hence the name. When disturbed by a light or sound, the sleepers will pulse bioluminescence throughout their bodies and will twitch in conjunction to this. During this state, the sleepers have a heightened level of sensory interaction, resulting in them waking up if the same level of luminary or auditory stimulus is maintained. The two most widely encountered variants of sleepers are in the form of human-sized bioforms that tend to run at their prey and use some kind of barbed tendril appearing from what was their mouths to attack. The other variant is also of human size, but is seen crawling on its hands and feet, firing some kind of barbed projectile via unknown means. The next level of variant comes in three variations. The first is known as the Scout, a life form which appears to be the only consistently active sleeper encountered at the complex. It wanders the corridors of the facility, firing out tendrils in order to detect its prey. If disturbed by light or movement, this life form will emit a deafening roar, waking up any sleepers in the vicinity. The next life form is what is known as the Giant or Titan. These horrific bioforms will lie dormant similar to other sleepers until stimulated by looming levels or sound or touch. When awakened, the Titans are capable of taking a considerably large amount of damage before falling and attack with teeth and tendrils to devastating effect. The next life form is known as the Charger, a bioform made out of spikes of bone and hardened substances that sleeps like most, yet when awakened will run at considerable speeds, goring their victims and subjected them to an onslaught of vicious lacerations. Other lifeform variations have been encountered, and as to the nature of the facility, more as of yet unseen entities will be encountered as the rundowns progress. It has been rumoured that there are sleepers on the lower levels that can hide beyond the detection of human eyesight, but I'll leave that for another day. Until then, if you are looking for something new to experience, I suggest you go and buy this game. It is a joy to play and perfectly captures the horror sci-fi genre into a video game experience. Thank you for the watch. I would like to thank the official members of the channel, David Gate, Asoka Ashletanyo, Swift O Scythe, Ministry of Magic Department of Mysteries, Patrick Green, The Wandering Reapers Gaming Community, Commander Omega 88, Alex Simmon, Mol Olson, and Admiral Deathbane. If you would like to be an official backer of the channel, then follow the link in the description. If you would like to leave a one-off donation and get your name mentioned in a video, follow the coffee link also in the description. Please make sure to like the video if you enjoyed this, as it massively helps this channel, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Until next time, Commanders 07.